Hi there, good evening, and welcome to the 36th Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Hoeske. There's still no V in this name. And yeah, I hope I can spread some holiday cheer here today. Um, I dressed up for you all, and um, we are pretty much going to do the same thing that we usually do. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you what I've been up to the past couple of weeks since the last installment of these. Then I'll tell you what the next steps will be uh after uh, this uh, uh session then we'll have a quick look at the stats at the usage stats of the anonymous usage uh, tracking plugin and then we have a qa segment where we already have four questions from the backlog but uh, i'll also keep an eye on the live chat in case there are any questions from those of you watching this live speaking of the live chat uh, on mobile you will find this below and on the desktop you should be able to find this over there and uh, as I said, I will keep an eye on things. And uh, yeah, also, um, this is the first time that I'm using a new uh, blue, blue Yeti mic that I got. So I hope everything is all right with regards to the audio levels. It looks good on my end, but if not, then please speak up in the chat. Um, OK, so let's dive right in, I guess. Uh, what I've been up to. So most of you will probably have noticed that there was a new stable release on November the 30th. 30th, <laughs> tricky word, um, uh, 1.5.0. And before that, of course, there went the usual uh, release candidate phase, phase, this time with three release candidates. Uh, the first one uh, I released on November 10th. And uh, the first RC was tested by uh, 894 inst or tested on 894 instances and saw uh, over almost 11 hours, 11,000 hours of print time, uh, so roughly 1.3 years. Then on November 17th, I released this next RC that fixed some issues observed with the first one. That one was tested on 263 instances and saw uh, 1,575 hours or 2.2 months of print time. And uh, immediately one day after that, uh, I got uh, made aware of an issue with the second RC that I then decided to yeah, rather remove immediately and push out a, a third RC, which then also ended up being the last one that we needed. And this uh, third RC, as I said, was released on November 18th, uh, was tested on 830 instances and saw uh, all in all 16,800 hours or 1.9 years of accumulated print time. So all in all, uh, the RCs that went before the stable re uh, release were tested on 1,334 individual instances and um, also uh, and, and saw uh, 29,391 hours or 3.4 years of print time. And that is yeah quite nice to see stats like that and know that stuff actually was tested uh, in a way. And I also brought uh, some charts with me that I want to show you. Uh, I also published those in the release announcement, but I still thought I would reiterate them here because I always find this interesting to see how the rollout looks like. So let me quickly switch uh, over there. So this was the uh, version distribution for the release candidate. So this was the first RC, this was the second RC, and this was the third RC. And I made this snapshot roughly maybe three hours before I released the final version. Um, this, sorry, <laughs> this was the printed hours. Again, first RC, second RC, third RC. You see there was quite a peak here. That is because there was a weekend. And then um, this, these are the numbers that I just also told you about. These are the, the accumulated individual instances that installed each uh, in each individual RC and also the accumulated printed hours uh, across all of the RCs. And yeah, so this is how the RC phase looked. Uh, there were no bugs left uh, when I pulled the trigger on the release on November 30th. and. Of course, as always, uh, right after I started getting bug reports in uh, from people whose setups apparently were not featured in uh, among all the all the thousands, roughly th over thousand, one thousand and a half instances that saw uh, the the or that were involved in the in the RC testing, 
which once again that uh, makes me want to say please help testing release candidates because then we can avoid situation like this um yeah well in any case this led to now two hotfix releases going out for 1.5 uh 1.51 on december the 4th and 1.52 only yesterday on december the 10th um they fix three bugs that uh, we only yeah identified after the the stable release of 150 and I also had to do a workaround or, or put in a workaround. That was why I rushed out the the five uh, the one five two release yesterday, uh, because of a third party dependency uh, introducing a breaking change in a in a patch release. So yeah, um, things like this happen, and this is the reason. Um, Currently, with regards to st stability of this release, the only thing I'm seeing are some reports from users that apparently are primarily running Creality printers um, that run into some weird connection instability issues with the 1.5 release or after the update to 1.5 where the uh, where the serial connection breaks down as if you had yanked out the, the cord. So on a very low level, which Octoprint does not really have any kind of control over, um, I'm not really sure what is going on there. And even if it is an honest to God issue or if there is some weird coincidence at work here, it's hard to say because we only have like three reports or something like this uh, right now. Maybe it was four. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyhow, uh, there's a post about this pinned into the get help forums on uh, or get help category on the uh, community forums. So if you are infected by this and if you're seeing this, then please read through the thread. There's a post by me in there with a bunch of steps outlining what kind of information I would like to gather in order to maybe get and get an, get get a rough chance at maybe identifying a pattern there. And uh, yeah, then please provide that. Um, as I said, I'm currently not really sure if there really is an issue here or if we are just seeing the usual update problems that are here and there. So every time so far when a release was rolled out, people had some connectivity issues after or some network issues after. And it could just be flaky problems that get triggered by the update because, of course, it requires some kind of yeah, is, is a bit more resource intense to, to, to apply. And then maybe something like, uh, like under voltage scenarios or something gets triggered more easily. I don't know. Uh, the only thing is that, yeah, right now, um, it appears to be a bit more um, prominent than usual. So we are, I'm, I'm, and we are in the forums we are trying to investigate here, but we need your help if you're affected by that. So, as I said, please chime into this uh, topic if, if so. And if there is a problem with a serial exception, device report, it's re device reports, readiness to read. And only after the update 215, please, because that is an exception that can also happen if you just pull the plug or if your pet pulls the plug or if there is a kink in the cable or something like that. So there are very, very, um, uh, yeah, there's a multitude of, of possible uh, reasons for this thing to happen. And I frankly have absolutely no idea how I could even possibly cause this from client code or from 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 user space code like octoprint um, especially since the change between 140 and uh, so the, the the commits between 140 and uh, uh, 142 sorry and 15 the, there weren't many changes to the com layer and those that were there they didn't even involve communication uh, handshaking or anything like this so yeah i currently i have absolutely no clue but i would like to get to the bottom of this if there is an issue indeed Okay, so that was pretty much most of November for me and also uh, the, the first parts now, the first days of December, all of this 1.5 uh, release candidate phase and then the final stable rollout. Um, what also happened uh, in this time was that on uh, November 30th and uh, December 1st, I participated in the very first ever uh, GitHub uh, Nova um, conference, which is an internal conference for GitHub stars. And I also gave a talk there on how I made the Octoprint plugin repository more dynamic using uh, GitHub Actions. And um, this is something that I also want to turn into a blog post as soon as I can. There's sadly no recording of this talk that I can share with you. But as I said, I want to talk, I want to turn this into a blog post so that 
uh, yeah, you can also read through it at least uh, if you are interested in this kind of stuff. And at this event, which makes me very happy to say, I uh, also won the very first ever GitHub Star Award for community growth. So right now I cannot yet show you the award itself because they are still in the process of manufacturing and shipping it to me, but I will actually get some little figurine that in the future you will see sitting there behind me. Uh, and yeah, I just want to thank all of you who uh, made that possible. All those plugin authors out there who, um, who, who helped building this ecosystem, all of you who help on the forums and on the Discord server with supporting the community and, and helping people with the issues and all that. Uh, yeah, I certainly could not have come this far with Octoprint at all uh, if it wasn't for, for all of you. And uh, yeah, this is just awesome. And yeah, thank you so much. Okay, um, another thing that uh, I participated in uh, there was uh, the past three days, there was the GitHub Universe conference, which was something which you also could all watch if you wanted. Uh, I also tweeted about that and I uh, took part there in a panel discussion on open source sustainability and funding together with uh, Evan Yo, uh, Wes McKinney and Sasha Rosenbaum. And um, the recording of that, uh, as of today, is now available on GitHub, and I also put it on the in the in the interviews and talks playlist here on this channel. If you want to take a look at it, uh, and I haven't yet, and uh, yeah, I, it was a fairly interesting discussion, and I, I uh, it was also really awesome to uh, to to be able to at least virtually meet Evan and uh, uh, meet Wes again, and of course also uh, to meet Sasha. Um, and yeah, this discussion, we covered uh, things like how we became maintainers in the first place, uh, how we became then full-time maintainers. So with open source maintenance as our, uh, our full-time job, uh, which as you know, watching this, hopefully uh, this one is for me. And um, yeah, how we, how we go about recognizing burnout and preventing it and also uh, stuff like community management and all this. And it was a fairly interesting discussion, I, I think. And I also got, uh, got some more perspective on, on, on how our other people experience things, how other maintainers experience things. And what also was a huge relief for me was that, uh, yeah, I could also relate to a lot of things that the others shared also in our, in our preparation meetings beforehand. And so, so that was really, really nice. Um, so yeah, check that out if you're interested in this kind of stuff and, um, otherwise don't, I mean, it's your choice. Okay. Um, that was all that happened and it might not sound like much, but frankly, it was a mat it was it was a whole ton of stuff and uh, the whole year was like a wave rolling over me and this is why looking at what are the next steps for me uh, it, one of the biggest next steps for me is a vacation so i don't know about you then again we all know that 2020 is like 2020 is right so uh, for me it has been one of the most draining years of my whole lifetime um, and, uh, yeah, especially due to the increased support requests on Octoprint and, and, and the whole project feeling like it was buzzing, like a busy bee stock during the first wave. And, uh, thankfully it got, it didn't get that bad during the second, uh, wave, or maybe I just learned to better, um, yeah, relax. I don't know, but, um, yeah, in any case, uh, due to that and my batteries being severely pleated, I'm going to drop the hammer on coding on Octoprint sometime next week. And I will also try to keep away from it until January. Uh, I cannot, I'm, yeah, I'm, let's not kid myself. I will probably still be at least before uh, Christmas, take a look here and there uh, into the, into the Discord server and uh, on the forums and all. But I will try to stay away from code and just get a breather and uh, recharge. Um, the verdict on how I'll spend Christmas and New Year's this year is still out, by the way. Currently, we are looking at something like uh, almost 30,000 new cases in Germany and about 600 death, uh, deaths per day. And this is not good because we are already in something that they deemed a light lockdown. Um, so it's very likely that they are going to uh, up the restrictions and well, I'm already hunkering down and self-isolating and all that, but 
if they make it pretty much illegal to see my parents and the parents of my significant other, then, well, we'll have to adhere to the rules, right? Um, and before you say, don't go visiting your parents, uh, they are hunkering down, I am hunkering down, we are all hunkering down. The, so, and we would only be like four people in a room with distance in between, but still, uh, it's something that we currently are just yeah, waiting for how, how things develop, how the numbers develop, and then we'll decide on this and how we'll go about it. And if push comes to shove, there's Skype, right? Um, or Zoom or whatever is your poison of choice. And New Year's, yeah, well, I, usually I would drive to my best friend and her husband and their dog and spend it there playing board games into the early morning hours. The past uh, two uh, years, we started by playing uh, a scenario of time stories each time. Um, and that was actually something that I was severely looking forward for for the past month now as well. But yeah, we'll have to see if we can actually do it. If not, we probably just turn to Tabletop Simulator on Steam, which is something I can really recommend, by the way, if you are a board game lover and find yourself in a pandemic. Um, and yeah, because I mean, they are self-isolating as well. Pretty much every one of my friends is self-isolating, come to think of it. Um, but curfew is curfew, so we'll have to see. Yeah. All in all, I'm just really going to try to make the best of it. Uh, and yeah, as should we all, I guess. And um, the primary plans for the vacation this year uh, actually include just lots of sleeping, binging through some series backlog and gaming because uh, I, I started Assassin's Creed Black Flag in September and I still own it um, through maybe 50%. And then there's also Cyberpunk, which just came out. And frankly, I have a huge amount of shame with regards to games that I own and still haven't played. So I... I'm fairly sure I will not get bored. And if push comes to shove, no, not only if push comes to shove. And then there is always also, of course, stuff like baking and uh, maybe some electronics tinkering and all that. And yeah, so that is the plan for into 2021 for me, starting next week. And after that, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to return to Octoprint. Um, the current... Um, uh, the current rough idea is, uh, first of all, of course, working uh, on, on 160, so fixing whatever bugs get reported that do not qualify for hot fixing. Um, add some new features and all that that are requested, merge whatever pull requests come in. And um, then I will also hopefully be able at some point to be able to find uh, time for... Um, it, for 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 2.0 again because yeah frankly the last weeks absolutely no chance uh neither during november or december uh, i i was really hoping i would be able to uh, because i figured well i released in at the end of at end of november uh, 150 and then i can um spend most of the rest of the of december of the working days to just um uh, sorry, the, the, the chat is a bit distracting right now. Uh, to just um, uh, to 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 look into 2.0 and also some other stuff that has been uh, has been on my uh, to do list for a while now. But well, hot fixing, support, the usual stuff. So yeah, okay, it's it is like it is. I get to it when I get to, get to it. I guess. Uh, I'm currently just hoping that at least at the very least, so as soon as a vaccine becomes a bit more widely available, um, this all will become a bit less crazy again at some point in the future, in the hopefully not so distant future. And frankly, also, uh, as soon as I am eligible to get vaccinated, well, I'll, I'll have a needle in my arm fa uh, faster than you can say vaccine. So um, yeah, just this just for the record. And be the, the reason why I just got distracted was that uh, Brian said building a rock, uh, a building a rock in your, ah, building a rock in, a, in your apartment to climb. So yeah, as you might remember, I uh, got into a new hobby last year, uh, rock climbing or bouldering or how may, however you may call it. And obviously I haven't been able to really do this since March now. Uh, I went once in August and realized that apart from me and my boulder buddy, no one else was wearing masks on uh, on the wall. And that was that for me. Um, 
So yeah, I really miss it and I will probably not be able to do it again until I have had that needle in my arm twice. So uh, yeah. And no, I'm not building a rock climbing gym out of bread in my apartment. I, I have one of these grip strength test thingies that I wanted to mount over one of my doors, but so far I didn't find the courage to actually do that because rented apartment and undecided whether the wall is strong enough and all that. So yeah, hmm, so much for that. And uh, yeah, let's move over to the stats then, I think, because that is the next thing on my uh, on my agenda. And I'm simply going to share my whole screen now because that makes more sense instead of trying to squeeze the webcam in as well. Uh, so first of all, the look at the usual thing here, uh, the last seven days and the, the general overview of everything. So we had something like 75,000 instances, unique instances over the past seven days. Uh, who printed roughly 130, 13 years worth of stuff. Um, 152 is gaining is now the, 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 the uh, uh, yeah now has the third place in the in the in the overall version distribution you can also see here was the release and here was here was a climb climbing up I sadly have not yet found a way to show more than one release on this graph here so I hope to figure that out at some point as well but for now you will have to do with one the other one was out of this thing here every anyhow that would be here. Uh, Python version distribution is slowly growing. I think the last time we looked at that, we had not yet gone past the 10K. And now we are at 12K instances out there and 100K uh, at Python 2. This is, by the way, over the past 60 days. Don't get confused why this is a bigger number than this. Uh, because this is a larger time range. And the same goes for here. Um, we see that... Yeah, the distance between the green line and the yellow line is slowly but steadily um, shrinking, but it's still there. And this is also a logarithmic scale. So, well, this is going to take a while, I think. Um, with regards to print shops, I introduced a new graph that you have not yet seen, which I quickly wanted to show you here because of, uh, of the usual reports that we get here and there from people uh, after an update, like my prints are no longer running through and I get errors and all the thing on, and everything cancels and stuff. Uh, this is the percentage of each print completion type uh, over the past 30 days. So started is, uh, is green. I actually need to t uh, remove the started one, I just realized, because we only want done, canceled and errored in here. But yeah, let's ignore that. Um, done is is yellow so everything that su that was successful is the yellow thing blue is anything that was cancelled by the user and red is anything that was uh, cancelled due to some firmware error and what we can see is the latter is fairly stable across all these 30 days here and there aren't that many fluctuations in the blue one either and even where there are fluctuations they do not coincide with an update window uh, so this graph, I think, is going to help a lot in, in, in analyzing if there is a general problem with an, with a release with regards to print stability. Uh, in other news, this stuff here looks fairly normal as well. Uh, many more prints than the previous weekends finished on the last weekend. And also I started there, so I guess people are getting ready for the holidays with their printing. Average print durations are pretty much constant as well. Um, what might be interesting, I actually don't know if I ever showed you that so far, is the print cancellation time histogram that I introduced a couple of months back here for me on this dashboard, which um, maps how many uh, prints are cancelled within the first uh, 600 sec seconds, uh, 1200, se so 600 to 1200, 1200 to 1800, and so on. So in 600 sec uh, in 10 minute buckets. Uh, and we see that most of the prints that get cancelled get cancelled within the first 10 minutes of the print job. So um, that was expected, but it's nice to be able to see it. Uh, it's also something that you can extract from this information. So half of the prints that get cancelled get cancelled uh, with, uh, within less than eight minutes, actually. And uh, three quarters within less than an hour. So yeah, that's funny a bit, I, I think. Um, to, to actually see this in numbers. 
Well, and the most common error that a, that a firmware reports is, as a, is, is printer, hold, printer halted kill called, probing failed, and heating failed. Thermal runaways are also runners up there, and there are a bunch of BL touch errors as well. So yeah, that's also interesting to see, though I cannot really um, create any kind of meaningful feature uh, implementations or something from that. It's still nice uh, to see stuff like that. And then I also uh, just thought I'd show you quickly uh, the, the individual version statistics for 150RC again. Um, nothing big changed here. The only thing is that right after the release of 150, you see that the RCs, uh, the use of the RCs uh, plummeted as did the print durations locked for that. And that's that. People who tested the RCs lived here. Uh, that's also nice. And apparently there were also 20 more um, RC testers after I took my last snapshot, but okay. Um, oh, something I also wanted to show you, because this is a very recent development. Uh, you can also now take a look at some of this data yourself since approximately two hours ago. Uh, on data.octoprint.org. Uh, huge shout out to Aaron York, who provided me with a, a simple HTML page that uses Plotly and the, um, the data exports that I mentioned last time, I think, that are located on data.octoprint.org slash export, uh, also shown down here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, this is all now just happening in the browser and being plotted using Plotly.js. And uh, this also should allow you to get a rough idea of what is happening uh, whenever you want and not when there is an Octoprint on air uh, happening. Yeah, so for currently we only have a version distribution and instances here and also a bit of the Python information. Um, we might look into uh, extending that at some point. But for now, this is what you have. And at least I think this is uh, better than nothing, right? <clears throat> yep. Um, and that brings me to, ha, hi, hi, uh, to the Q&A segment. Uh, and the first question actually by Kunzi. In 1.5.0, Access control became mandatory for all users. Would you mind sharing some stats, infos about how many or what kind of reports you got regarding unsecured Octoprint instances, instances on the internet? Um, so I do not have any kind of visualized stats on that or anything, but I got over the course of the past couple of years, I got more or less regular emails telling me uh, things like, hey, I found 2,000 unsecured instances on the internet, or did you know there are people out there with unsecured webcams from your software and stuff like that. And that happened all the time. And then there were, of course, the usual uh, people on the forums who came online and had something like, for some reason, my whole Octoprint is now colored red and there is a weird G-code file I didn't upload that said, please lock up this instance or something, or please secure your instance or something. And yeah, the, the, the final nail in the coffin uh, uh, is, um, it was a mail I got uh, in, in late, no, in mid-October, I don't know, but roughly around that time, um, that uh, was someone telling me that they had realized that on any kind of unsecured instance publicly available on the internet, they could pretty much just reconfigure the system commands and use that to create a reverse shell, which is like, yeah, of course, because you can create a system command and then you can execute it from the system menu. So yeah, you can execute arbitrary shell commands that way. And the same, of course, goes for, you can also, if you have admin access to an instance, and if you do not secure your instance, then everyone has admin access to your instance who can access it. Um, if you have admin access to an instance, you can also install a plugin that does whatever you want it to do, uh, including opening uh, reverse shells to some command and control server that you own or do whatever other malicious stuff that you want to do. And, um, uh, yeah, 
I mean, this is per design. If I did prevent this from happening, if you have admin access, then you could not be, would not be able to install plugins anymore. While the web interface, you might possibly have to log into SSH in order to do that, which of course would be less user friendly. So would exclude many of the people currently using Octoprint who are who are afraid of of, of the shell, or simply not experienced with the shell. Um, and the same holds true for stuff like configuring a system command. So I could remove this from this uh, from the from the configuration that is exposed on the web interface, but that would mean you would have to edit YAML files in order to configure stuff like this and see above. A lot of people are not comfortable with that. It would se severely hamper them. So the logical consequence was simply to take away people's ability to shoot themselves in their own food and um, remove the ability to disable access control. And I'm really, really, really sorry that uh, this change caused some overhead for many people out there who exclusively use Octoprint in a secured context and therefore didn't need to enable access control and now had to enable the auto login local feature, which has been in Octoprint since 2013, um, but which funnily enough, apparently no one knew about until I uh, talked about it now. Um, but uh, yeah, just please understand that after years of sounding like a broken record and telling people to please not just blindly port forward and to please secure their stuff and that their IP will be found on the internet if they do a port forward and that stuff like Shodan IO exists and, 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 and so on. Um, and nothing changing in the behavior of users. And in the end, this negatively impacting not only my time and my resources, but frankly, also my reputation. Um, because if people run around and say Ocreprint is insecure uh, by default, just because they did everything they could to make it insecure, this is something that pretty much threatens my livelihood. So this is the reason that I finally said, okay, enough is enough. And uh, now you will have to enable access or, or you have to configure access control. This obviously still doesn't mean that you should put your Octoprint instance on the internet, please. But at least now, if you do so, maybe even unknowingly or out of laziness or, or out of, of, of convenience or simply because you do not know better, um, at least you will no longer pretty much leave it online with the keys in the ignition. So that is the idea here. And uh, I also hope that it will uh, remove the likelihood of, an, of, an, of a repetition of this day I not so fondly remember where I uh, was busy concurrently talking to three journalists because some uh, Internet Storm Center blog post had uh, revealed that there were like 5,000 Octoprint instances unsecured on the Internet and suddenly uh, Heise and, and, and Wired and, and Register wanted to talk to me. And this can quickly, quickly turn south situations like these. So uh, yeah, we are talking, as I said, we're talking about my livelihood here. So uh, with regards to security, I really will rather limit things so that people are less likely to shoot themselves in the foot and make it a tiny bit harder for the power users to achieve uh, certain, let's say, uh, shortcuts than the other way around. Uh, and yeah, I hope you can understand that. I really wish people would be more sensible and follow advice, but they don't. And I really don't want that on my conscience anymore. Uh, so yeah, at least not as long as I still have options up my sleeve to uh, prevent stuff like this from happening. Yeah, that was me on my soapbox again on security. Sorry for that. <laughs> Uh, let's just quickly switch to the next question uh, by John, who asks, uh, you recently changed the versioning system, which is great, but I seem to always forget to check where the various roadmap items will be. Do you have a list of features ordered by priority of development available somewhere? Uh, so maybe first of all, a quick recap. What what version sh version uh, versioning system change is he talking about? So uh, with 1.5.0, I... Uh, finally switched Octoprint over to fully adhere to uh, Samware. Uh, up until and including 142, it was uh, such that uh, I would increase the, the middle part of the number. So the four, the five, uh, the one, the four in 142 um, for bigger releases that added new features. For example, 
we went went from 1312 to 140 and 140 introduced uh, python 3 compatibility and uh, the new granular permission system and a bunch of other stuff so it was a bit a bit of a bigger release and i would go for only for for patch increases for for all the uh, for all the maintenance releases so anything that fixed bugs and also added minor improvements and this part where you add minor improvements, this is actually something that does not fully adhere to the uh, semantic versioning uh, standard. Um, I also went over this last time, I think. I just want to quickly recap that here. Uh, the thing is that you are only supposed to increment the, pi the final part when you fix bugs. And this is what we are doing now, which is also why Octoprint now, within a year, went from 1.3 to 1.5, which so far never has happened, uh, because 1.5 is, is now, um, let's say, a version of 1.4 with bug fixes and improvements. And 1.5.1, 1.5.2, they only contain bug fixes compared to 1.5.0. So the next version that I'm going to push out will also be 1.6.0, the, the, next, the next version that is not a hotfix, I should add. Um, yeah. So that is uh, the, the, the change that happened. And it's not a big change, but it's still something that maybe you should be aware of in case you're wondering why the sudden increase in version numbers is happening. Um, and now to the actual question here um, about if there is a roadmap or, or rather where to find out what the roadmap is. So uh, if you look in the GitHub issue tracker, anything that is locked there and that I want to tackle as part of a certain release, I will assign to the milestone that is created for this release. So there are currently two milestones, 1.6.0 and 2.0. And um, uh, there is a bunch of issues uh, associated with them. And I throw requests and bug uh, reports in those. Um, and also pull requests when they will be, when they are merged or uh, when I plan on merging them into whatever uh, release or whatever milestone. Uh, this does not include stuff that I quickly come up with, <laughs> but um, yeah, usually this is the, the the way to at least get a rough idea of the roadmap. There is no central formal roadmap where I plot down everything that goes into a release because, frankly, that would at least currently uh, I do not have I currently do not have the process for that um, established. Um, so that would currently mean a lot more organizational overhead than I'm actually willing to uh, commit to because, frankly, I already have enough overhead as is with everything going on around Octoprint. So, yeah, um, if you want to get an idea what will be part of the next release or the release after that or anything, take a look at the milestones. Those are roughly uh, the best um, with regards to a roadmap that I can offer right now. And the next question, also by John. Uh, Creality is coming out with their own Creality branded Pi plus Octoprint black box. Have they been in touch with you or have you reached out to them after finding out what has that interaction yielded, if anything? Um, so the only thing that I'm aware of is the Wi-Fi box from them. And I'm not aware that Octoprint is in any kind of way involved in there. Maybe the concept like Octoprint, but not Octoprint itself. If there is something else there. I do not know about it and I would like to get more information. <laughs> if we are talking about the Wi-Fi box though, I have it here. Um, I, I got it from them. I got it sent from them after I asked and uh, I still have not ha found the time to actually take a look at it. Neither connect it nor open it up and take a look what's inside. Um, but uh, as far as I know, as I said, Octoprint is not involved there. Uh, and uh, they also yeah, there, there also was not any kind of interaction going on there, apart from some what some somewhat aggressive advertising on their part on the forums, which we frankly shut down quite quickly because it was like a bit too too competitive for my taste, especially considering that they were pushing it on to the official Octoprint forum. But other than that, uh, no, there was no collaboration, interaction, anything at all there. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe at some point may, uh, after my vacation or maybe even during the, my vacation, I will at least finally find the time to connect that thing and take a look at it, a closer look at it. But yeah, I I wouldn't hold my breath if I, if I were you. I cannot promise anything. Uh, things are nuts or have been nuts. And right now I, I really just want to relax. Um, 
that was that, I think. Yeah. Okay, then the final question in our backlog from... I don't know because they didn't provide a name. Uh, first of all, thank you for all your efforts. You're welcome. Uh, my question relates to the relationship between Octoprint and Marlin. Are there any changes or additions to Marlin that would improve Octoprint? Well, um, okay. Uh, let's start first with the thing that things are actually already fairly nice as they are with regards to the, um, yeah, let's say the, the, the collaboration between Octoprint and Marlin. Um, it would be one thing that has been bothering me for, me for a while because user, users usually re demanded an implementation from me instead of going to the firm. In this case, was uh, this whole long file name thing on the SD card because the only thing Marlin so far offers in that regard is this M33 command, which one, which uh, which returns this um, yeah, just this associating text line for so you can request for one file you can request a long name from the from the sd which of course is a bit of a bad idea because if you have 200 files on the sd and you now iterate over all of them that's not really great and you will have to do that because otherwise your list will still just show the abbreviated 8.3 uh dos uh names and this is what people complain about um what I should add is that starting with Octoprint 1.5, I implemented, at least on Octoprint side, the, the parsing change to the M20 listing. So if there is an M, if there is a long file name in the M20 file list and how that should be formatted is documented and, 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 the, and, and the ticket is also linked to my, I think, in the change log, um, then uh, Octoprint will happily display the long file name. Uh, just from the M20 listing. And this is something that I would really love to see implemented in firmware. And if there is any holdup uh, due to a technical nature that prevents that from happening, I'm happy to talk about this. But um, yeah, I will not implement M33 polling on Octoprint side. So this is the, the only thing that the only part where I would actually love to see a certain firmware change to happen because that would really make a lot of users very, very happy, I think. Um, Apart from that, I don't have any complaints or, or anything like that with regards to mainline Marlin. And now, now the, the problem starts. Um, uh, a bigger issue for me really is this, this, this terrible firmware fragmentation that we have in the 3 print community. So we all know Marlin, right? And, 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 and we know that where to find it on GitHub and, and all that. But the problem is that if you buy a printer that has Marlin on it, that is usually not anything with any resemblance to what you will find on the official Marlin GitHub. Uh, what you usually get shipped is some version that the vendor, the printer vendor forked from the mainline branch years ago, if you are unlucky. Um, fiddled around with, sometimes introduced some very, very creative bugs in the process. Um, and uh, yeah, that, 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 that causes a lot of pain for the users and also for people like me who have to integrate with stuff like that. And um, if printer vendors in general would just stop trying to cook up their own solution and instead backed the established firmware uh, variants, let's say that. I mean, we have Marlin, we have Repetier, we have um, uh, Clipper, of course, and uh, Smoothieware, I think, is also still there. Redeem, I think, was now, is, 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 is I don't know, maybe if, if, if it's being rewritten or something. John mentioned something, but I forgot the details. Um, so there's some choice there, and uh, it would be really great if printer vendors, instead of trying to roll their own, or rolling their own based on some ancient fork of one of these, they would just chip in and contribute both money and time in order to make the mainline versions compatible to their printers. And that would really help a lot of us, all of us, because that, yeah, it would simply help with this whole fractured firmware landscape that is causing so much overhead with regards to issues I mean, I, I sometimes still get people stumbling over problems, over firmware issues that I fixed myself seven years ago. So yeah, let that sink in. On on printers, they just bought, I, I should add. So um, 
that would something be that would be really really great but this is not something that i or uh for example scott from marlin can do anything about apart from being very very vocal about this um because this is a step that the printer vendors will have to take <clears throat> and i really should have let me quickly take a sip from my water bottle because my uh, my throat is incredibly dry oh that's better okay um yeah that was that then um wrong button live questions let me quickly switch back to me in big okay Ooh. um question by brian does the unique instances power on the data side just mean running instances i'd love to see printing versus idle uh yeah those are the printers who or, or rather not the printers but the octoprint instances who are up and running so uh, I, I i'm not even sure that i currently have a way to distinguish printing instances from non-printing instances but frankly i think that would be an interesting thing to maybe add to the ping event <laughs> that gets sent out every 15 minutes i'll think about that um and sorry if you're hearing the church bells you know the drill the usual stuff it doesn't stop here um so yeah I'll, I'll try to remember to to look into that uh would would only be able to track that starting with one six though because that would need to be changed in the uh, tracking plugin itself to push this kind of data maybe the printer state or something the printing state rather um and then brett asks uh, do you track all printer commands even virtual printer or octolabs in test mode i cancel a lot of those after i see what i want to see yeah i do so i do not distinguish uh, between a print that was cancelled while it was in some kind of dry run mode or it was against the virtual printer or anything. Um, but personally, I think the like the, the amount of printers uh, that are being run in in like a regular productive mode will still crush any kind of debugging setup. So this is probably neglected. I cannot say this word right now. It can be ignored, is what I want to say. Neglectable? Is this correct? I don't know. Sorry, I my brain is mush. I can't English today. Um, not really true, but you get my drift. Uh, yeah. So um, that by the way, also that also holds true, of course, for when I do my final update tests here. So prior to every um, release and also to every release candidate I run my python test cluster here with the test rig that i blocked about in august if you want to check that post out i can write highly recommend it if you're into uh, automating stuff like testing physical devices i was very proud of the solution and i still celebrate it every time that i roll out a release in any case i i do this uh these these update tests before every release and release candidate where i flash octopi in various versions on this on the on the pi and provision it and stuff and then i test if i can update to uh, the new version that i'm about to hopefully release and i also have tracking enabled for that so if you see versions show up in the stats before the official release something like two hours before or so then this was my nine or ten test flashes uh, that happened right before the release but yeah good luck catching those <laughs> um but yeah that was that okay um i don't think we still have anything in the live chat apart from weasel asking me to show off my Keanu doll which i'm now simply quickly going to do which was a fun surprise <laughs> from the so that awaited me yesterday morning on my desk as did the uh, female z one over there uh, and yeah once i shut this down i will take care of dinner and then i will hopefully be able to play some more cyberpunk because so far i have barely make managed to make myself a character and started the game and that was that yeah um Okay, so nothing left in the live chat, uh, nothing left in my backlog either. 
and that means we can wrap this up i think uh so the next regular one of these i will schedule sometime in uh in in, in uh, yeah 2021 obviously um uh, and I'm aiming for mid to late January. I cannot promise you exactly when right now, because I will, when I return from my vacation, the first thing I will have to check is what stuff is going on and what I have to take care. And that obviously is more important than a, a, a devlog. Um, so that will take precedence, a precedent, priority, whatever you, yeah, I can't English today. Um, and I will also point, uh, post the appointment as usual on Patreon and, and all that. So you will not, hopefully not be able to miss it. Um, and until then, uh, all that's left to say, I think, is first of all, um, happy holidays in advance. And um, yeah, I hope you stay healthy and you are able to uh, end this weird SF year on a somewhat good note and hopefully also are able at, to at least in some way celebrate uh, the holidays and the end of the year and all that. And otherwise just continue to wear a mask and stay healthy and all that. And uh, yeah. I hope this was interesting for you. And um, with that being said, just until next year and happy printing. Bye.